what I did 60 years ago is full circle. It's been an honor and something I never dreamed of in a million years. Is it all right with you, man? Well, certainly. Oh, guys, what I've always wanted. A real Florida beach hat. <laughs> I started on the Red Skelton show at 21. I was on it from 1964 through 1968, which is the reason why they invited me to the first annual Red Skelton convention in Vincennes. Yeah, it's honored. I'm very honored. Well, I'm going to have a very busy week, so I will be the key speaker, and I will be showing my art at Open Gallery on Main Street, and I will be in their parade, and I will be eating dinner with his Red Skelton's wife, Lothian. Is that exciting? It's like a great full circle moment, you know, it's like Maureen knew Red, Red was a painter, and as is Maureen, and just being able to have the opportunity to bring her back to Red's hometown, to showcase her artwork, see where Red grew up. I just feel a very connectivity with Maureen and just seeing this come full circle has been a really great opportunity for me also. Well, Vincennes is the oldest city in Indiana and it's one of the oldest cities in the Midwest. It was founded in 1732, it was inhabited here by Native Americans of the Wee Nation and the Miami and Piankasha, but uh, the French fur traders came and settled here. Uh, and since then, of course, it led to an important confrontation between the British and the French and the colonial Americans uh, in establishing the Midwest. And so the fact that George Rogers Clark came here, captured Vincennes, uh, was the gateway to the West and led to the Louisiana Purchase and those types of the things that happened later and then continuing throughout history then obviously we have our connection with Red Skelton uh, the great comedian and uh, who's born here and learned his uh, first uh, issues about uh, uh, vaudeville and the Pantheon Theater and when he was a young boy and then went and joined the circus and uh, and then his hometown here became important to him as he got older and he came back to our community and his his widow now has gifted our community with this great museum and some of the artwork that you've seen here. Uh, so we're very fortunate to live in a community that has such rich history, both old and in, in the future. Well, Red Skelton's Museum is on the University of Indiana's grounds. And why? Because the house he was born in is right just behind the museum. So I think that's why, and, and he's very good with Vincennes. He's always been giving back through the years money to help the children here as well. Well, he is our favorite son. You know, there are murals and there are statues and there are so many things here just commemorating Red and just, you know, like our mission for the museum, you know, his legacy of laughter is what we want to do to inspire people. I mean, he grew up here with nothing, very poor, you know, really had to, I guess for lack of a better term, pull himself up by his bootstraps and he got out of town and made something of himself, but he never forgot his roots. He always talked about his hometown, Vincennes. He visited here and he really loved the fact that he was from a small town and appreciated his roots. Well, my first stop is going to be at the Open Gallery downtown Vincennes on Main Street. I'll be there for the month of July and the month of August. I have been painting for over 60 years and I own my own art gallery. It's called Maureen Gaffney Wolfson Fine Arts. It's in Chatsworth, California. So come on out or go on my website, MaureenGaffneyWolfson.com. <laughs> And being such a small town, are you the only gallery in town? No, there's a Northwest Territory Art Guild. It's, it's helpful to have more than one gallery. It kind of creates this, this environment. So it, the response has been really positive. A lot of people have said it's something that the community could really needed. And so it, it's been a lot, it's been very, very rewarding. It was just so fun to see local people come in here and experience Maureen's art for the first time. I mean, 
from people reminiscing about red when they look at the red skeleton artwork to admiring the landscapes from Ireland or Georgia or the dogs. It's just, it's, everybody has a different opinion of what their favorite piece is. And just listening to Maureen talk about her technique and how she was so self-taught at the beginning and then had some lessons, I think everyone was really appreciative of that opportunity. A lot of artists came to see what I was doing and they've never seen anything quite like this. And I tell them I'm a lyrical artist. I paint stories of my travels, my life, my thoughts. Anything that I see a painting in my life, I paint. It's like God said, open your eyes, there's a painting. And I said, okay, I got it. I can't imagine a world without art or a house without art. I just want to see if Red's home. Red, are you home? I just want to wish you a happy birthday. Today would be Red Skelton's birthday, July 18th. He'd be 111 years old. Happy, but he's here in spirit, I'm sure, so I'm going to sing him a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Red. Happy birthday to you. So my next stop was to take down the paintings from the open gallery to move them to the museum for the duration of the um, annual celebration of Red. And then it will go back again to open gallery. Yeah, I guess we'll just start one at a time. The small ones for the back seat, I think. Yeah. The bigger ones we'll put in another. Yeah. Oh. It's going just great. And, and um, um, let me turn this around, big boy. <laughs> it's going fine. It's going wonderful. In fact, the reason. Yeah. I'm thinking about. Yeah. You want to put your arms in? Or are you okay? No, I'm good. Okay. We might want to. Rather be it. safe than sorry. Yeah. yeah we'll turn we it up when we go in. I do feel good today, I do. Last night I slept like a log and <laughs> woke up in the fireplace. <laughs> actually, I'm, I'm actually celebrating my third anniversary of my 60th birthday. <laughs> yeah, I got young blood, I got young blood. <laughs> just in an old container. Yeah. <laughs> Red was very, very kind, very gentle, always smiling. Um, he gave, he, he gave back in life. When I fell on the floor, he saw I had holes in my shoes uh, during a skit. And so he, um, later that day, gave me $400 to buy a new pair of shoes. So I did, I bought a new pair of shoes, a dress, and some of it I saved for my rent. <laughs> But he's very giving and very kind. And I think that's what life should be. We should all be given back, even if it's just a smile. Art has kept me level-headed, <laughs> sane, um, finding myself, um, which was a difficult situation in my life to be able to find myself because I came from a, a very um, poor background and there were six of us and it was difficult and my father wasn't there also so it was difficult and so painting helped me find myself and, and gave me confidence and purpose. Gave me a, it gave me a lot. It's kept me civil and sane. It's therapeutic. It works. <laughs> See how it is, folks, when you believe? <laughs> he 
was really what I would, I guess I would call a renaissance man, because not only was he a comedian, but he was an author, a composer, and an artist. And he started painting in 1947, when he was in his 30s, and he um, continued throughout his death. Um, really, right up until the end, he was still painting. He claimed that it relaxed him and just kind of centered him. And I think it's a way he expressed himself, kind of like Maureen does with her artwork as well. And it, most people are really surprised when they come to the museum because they don't know that Red Skelton was an artist. And that's one of the reasons we're opening the Red and Lothian Skelton Gallery of Fine Art at the museum, just to have an opportunity to showcase more of his artwork. We have the 60 millimeter prints of the episodes, also the real to real videotapes, and we moved in it down here, and we managed to copy the 60 millimeter tapes of film onto uh, YouTube, and uh, we have a special code for our members that they can uh, see the episodes from the TV show. Where are you guys going right now? We are going to the parade. To the, parade. the Red, Red Skelton, Skelton Parade. 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 Get your butt. I, I, was in, I, was in, I was in the court of law and the, the judge said he was going to give me a suspended sentence. I said, I don't want that. And he said, do you know what a suspended sentence is? I said, yeah, that's when they hang you. <laughs> She's a lovely lady, very talented, captures great likenesses in her drawings and, and uh, her jaclets that she had on display, a beautiful, beautiful exhibit. But inside, I can see she's a lovely lady. There we go. Marie, I think my hat will stay on at this place. <laughs> my great pleasure to introduce for you Maureen Gaffney Wolfson. <laughs> I do. Oh, hello and good afternoon. I'm just overflowing with so much joy and I'm so proud and thrilled to be here on behalf of an outstanding human being, Mr. Red Skelton. Thank you, Ann Pratt and Mark Kratzner for this great honor and for this wonderful opportunity and not in a million years did I ever dream of this. It's quite something for me, I'll tell you. It's like 60 years later, you and Anne and Mark have provided me a dream come true in helping me come full circle. Like Red, I come from a very humble beginning also. I was a little girl born July 1st, 1943, who came from Worcester, Massachusetts, as an infant sleeping in a dresser drawer because there was no money for a crib. While living in a flea bag motel during World War II, my mother's name was Donna May, raising four kids. My father left when I was about four, so I grew up without my father. I did find out that at one time he had a job working in a circus as a cook. While I was attending parochial school, my family lived in um, Cambridge, Massachusetts. After that, we were living in the attic in Cambridge, Massachusetts. After that, we moved around a lot, from Roxbury to Dodchester to Tucson, Arizona in 1958, which there was nothing really much there then. 
I dropped out of school after the eighth grade and went on my own at 15. I was 15 after the eighth grade because I was kept back twice. About 1963, I did move to California and lived with my mother. The move prepared me for what was going to happen next. It was just the continuation of a long journey. I found a job flipping hamburgers in a hamburger stand, using some of my $3 an hour to take up fashion modeling, and I was good at it, maybe because I had studied ballet for five years, and my recitals at the John Hancock Building in Boston gave me my first taste for the stage and showbiz. Finally, in 1964, I move into Hollywood. I modeled for cold bathing suits, landed a cameo role uh, in Bill Sargent's Harlow with Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. and Carol Lindley, and she played Harlow. Along the way, I was introduced to Cecil Barker of the Red Skelton Show. I received a call for an interview and was asked to bring a bathing suit. So after I received, the cast, I, after I received a casting call to show up at CBS, Hysterical, I called Tucson, one of my friends in Tucson, and I told him, I'm gonna be on the Red Skelton show. Wow, who knew? I was so green, it was unbelievable. <laughs> but I was the youngest member at that time. Working on the Red Skelton show for me wasn't work at all. I felt like I was at a party all the time. It was lots of laughs, and I was hoping it would never end. The energy was so good, pleasant, and everyone was friendly. But it was, hilariously, especially, it was hilarious, especially during the dirty hour, when Red would rehearse and do a few naughty things that would have been censored on television, things that he probably did back in vaudeville days and maybe burlesque. We always had a live audience when shooting the show. However, during the dirty hour, it was a closed show, except for friends and someone like Carol Burnett. Almost everyone in the CBS building came to his studio to see what he was going to do. The whole CBS building was in there. I met many stars that I would never have had a chance to meet. Oh, and one of my favorite was Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> then there was Bobby Darren, whom I had a teenage crush on. Then he spoiled it and went and married Sandra D. <laughs> my most precious memory was when Red invited me in to sit with a few of his friends in his dressing room, where he had an upright piano in the corner. There he began to play his new composition, and David Rose, the conductor, came in, and Red asked, what do you think? David said, I like it. Being there at that moment reminded me of my mother, Donna May. After dinner at my grandmother's house, we would all retire to the living room. My mother permeated the whole house with classical music. About 1966, I took up painting. Well, I was still on the Red Skelton show, but I decided to take it up because I had a girlfriend that said, Maureen, I had heartbreak. I was really a mess. Let's go buy some oil and paints and we'll paint. Let's paint. All right. I started painting, and um, the first painting I did was of Red Skelton. <laughs> it was the worst. You know that, Lothian. It was the worst. <laughs> but I did get a little essence, but it was my emotion that I saw from this photo of him that captured me because it was me really screaming, ah! I have been painting now for almost 60 years. My works have been many times to Ireland, Seoul, Sweden, Chile, Mumbai, Israel, and throughout the United States. Getting back to Red, though, I would like to tell you about a couple of times, many years later, I met up with Red somewhere where I had read that he was going to make an appearance in Riverside. And I was feeling very blue and down that day, and I thought maybe a good drive will do me some good. So I drove down to Riverside, and there was Red signing. But he looked up, and he gave him that smile of recognition. After all these years, he remembered me. That, a smile can do a lot. And so he said, hi, how are you? Would you like to sit down here next to me? And there was a chair there, and I sat down there all day next to Red as he signed and talked with the people. And then it was time to say goodbye. <laughs> and he went his way, and I drove back to Los Angeles. 
Red, as you know, was not only a comedian, actor, musician, and artist, he was a total artist in every respect, a genius. He believed in God, he was very patriotic, he loved his country, and he loved Vincennes, Indiana. Now, I'm very excited to share with you my memories from my time on the series so you can see why I feel so blessed to have known Red as a friend and without him knowing it, a mentor. So, let's dim the lights. Come back, you 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 come back, you're only seven years old. Why are you chasing the maid? By the time I catch her, I'm going to be old enough to find out. <laughs> and I got a feeling it's going to be goodbye tricycle. <laughs> I have never seen such behavior. You're impossible, and I quit. You do, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just when I finally mastered doing the walk-on... Well, as we say in chicken plucking circles, he's got a feather brain. <laughs> oh, I see the sprinters are getting ready for the 100-yard dash. Uh, who starts them? Oh, here comes the starter now. <laughs> Won't they run right past her? Would you? <laughs> Red may have been in the oldest living secret, he may have been the oldest living secret agent, but this scene may have been called the last living person. Starring Red Skelton as the world's oldest secret agent. <laughs> Well, 
Now my character may have died in that final segment, but for me, standing here today in such an honored moment, I'm much more alive than ever. From that baby girl in a small hometown of Worcester, Mass, to Red's hometown in Vincennes, Indiana, it's been a journey with many dreams along the way, something I can only describe as my spiritual connection to Red. I have come full circle. I started at 21, and they called me to come here when I was 81. That's 60 years later. Now I'm 82, and Red also just had a birthday, and he's 111 if he were here. I'm so proud to have had this opportunity to have shared a small part of my life's journey with Red on his stage. Red always had a signature way of closing with each episode. I would love to honor him to celebrate our friendship. The time has come to say goodbye. My, how time does fly. We had a laugh, perhaps a tear, and now we hear goodbye. The time has come to say goodnight, for times like these are few. I wish you love and happiness in everything you do. The time has come to say goodnight, and I hope I found a friend. And so we'll say, may God bless until we meet again. God bless, Red. God bless. And may we meet again. Thank you.